Aiden and the others exchanged glances when they heard this. He had already told them about the stories of the immortal beings in the celestial realm. It seemed that the legends in Africa were similar to the ones on the East Coast. They all stood silently and waited for Mama Bola to continue. Peace returned to the world. The crack appeared again, but the beings didn't return from the other world. Instead, grayish-white monsters came to our land. The monsters devoured and destroyed everything in Africa. This was exactly what was happening on the continent now with the invasion of the Skyhatchers. Our ancestors believed these terrifying monsters came from the underworld. Only such an evil and dark place would give birth to creatures like that. The hole that released them is known as the Door to the Underworld. Mama Bola paused for a moment as her bony fingers flipped the pages of the book. In order to chase away the monsters, she continued, totem masters from all over the continent united. Under the lead of the high priest, the monsters were finally driven out of Africa. She raised her head and asked with a smile, Does everyone understand? Ada nodded and then asked, So Skyhatchers have appeared before, right? If that's the case, this book should tell us how we can get rid of them now. Mama Bola nodded her head approvingly. I can see why you're the genius of the East Coast's Westing office. That's right, the exact method to expel the Skyhatchers is recorded here. Everyone pricked up their ears and shuffled closer. Mama Bola read the book, and they learned that the Skyhatchers had invaded Africa more than once over the centuries. The totem masters and tribal leaders had indeed been at a loss at first. However, after many careful observations, they discovered that Skyhatchers weren't the only creatures that fell from the sky. Every time they landed, they were led by the most powerful of them, the Skyhatcher Queen. She commanded them. If the team killed the Queen, they could close the door to the Underworld. Without the energy supply from the Underworld and the command of their Queen, the Skyhatchers will become unorganized and lose their ability to fight. Everyone now understood that the Queen was the key to ending the chaos. The problem was, though, that they didn't know how to find her. Aiden quietly looked at Mama Bola. From her relaxed smile, he could tell that she already knew where the queen could be found. She nodded in response to the question in his eyes. Yes, you're right again. I know where we can find the Skyhatcher Queen. She's in the ancient canyon to the east, but I can't confirm the exact location yet. Aiden's heart skipped a beat. He thought of the information that Jared and Brielle had shared. It was likely that the many Skyhatchers had gathered in the Great Rift Valley to protect their queen. The reason I invited you here is because I lack powerful allies like you, Mama Bola continued, and I've already formulated a detailed plan. I'll send totem masters from all over the continent to various places to prevent the Skyhatchers from getting to the east. You all will take advantage of this and enter the Great Rift Valley to find the queen and kill her, bringing an end to the invasion. This is a matter of great importance. I never had adequate help until now. Are you willing to work with an old woman like me? Billy and the others were all silent as they looked to Aiden for his answer. Mama Bola and Piero were surprised. They didn't think that he was the one who would make the decision. It might not be enough to just rely on the few of us. He rubbed his chin and hesitated for a moment. Piero will go with you, Mama Bola said immediately. You can take another totem master as well. You can choose whoever you'd like. Whatever you gain from killing the Skyhatcher Queen will be yours. We won't take anything. Aiden smiled and nodded, happy with the arrangement. Sounds like a plan. After discussing the details of the plan with Mama Bola, Aiden and his team didn't delay any longer. They immediately left Sunita and headed to the Great Rift Valley in the east. Piero, who was a top-level totem master, would go with them, along with another mid-level totem master. Though the second totem master wasn't a strong combat fighter, Aiden had selected them because they were more familiar with the local geography. Jared and Brielle also joined the team. The group was ultimately made up of the top experts from the East Coast and outstanding totem masters from Africa, making them one of the best units on the continent. Mama Bola also left the tower, preparing to mobilize the rest of the totem masters so they could disrupt the Skyhatcher's journey to the East and give Aiden and the others the time and space they needed to execute the Queen. It had been a few weeks since the appearance of the Skyhatchers, and many people were aware of the dangerous beasts. They may not have called them by their official name, but everyone knew to fear them, whether they were called beasts, monsters, or magic demons. Based on the information that Mama Bola had provided, over 10,000 people had been killed by Skyhatchers. The large number of deaths caused many families to leave their countries and go where it was safer. As the high priest and a representative of the African country, Mama Bola instructed other countries to open their borders and accept the refugees. K-1 
countless people were grateful for her intervention. However, as the population density in the northern regions reached an unprecedented level, there were some conflicts between the native people and the newcomers. Even so, this was something that Mama Bola and the country's officials would have to work out. It had nothing to do with Aiden. He had already led the team to the north of the Great Rift Valley, where a canyon split the vast terrain. The valley spanned thousands of miles and wasn't just the largest in Africa, but in the world. When looking down at the valley, the canyon was like a huge scar that stretched far and wide. The canyon itself wasn't barren land, but contained a variety of environments. There were plains, grasslands, lakes, forests, and swamps. There were even dormant volcanoes. It wouldn't be easy to find the Sky Hatcher Queen in such confusing and complicated terrain. Moreover, Aiden and the team would have to face a large number of Sky Hatchers along the way. That was why he had specially selected a totem master who was familiar with the geography of the area so they could find the Sky Hatcher Queen. Killing her would end the chaos in Africa as soon as possible and also bring peace to the world. From the news that Aiden had received from the United States, there were some people on the East Coast who were preparing to use the situation in Africa to stir up trouble. He didn't want everything he had built to be destroyed while he was away. He believed that Mama Bola's plan would work, and that way they could prevent the Earth from suffering another disaster and he could return home much sooner. Somehow, Aiden felt that he had really become the savior that Kenya had spoken of. He was silent for a while before he sighed, wondering if it was all fate. They entered the canyon near one of the volcanoes. The ground was covered in gray stones all over, which reminded Aiden of Flint Falco. They hadn't had any contact since they had last met in Europe. He had no idea what the mysterious man was up to. Jared's sudden shout interrupted his thoughts. Be careful, he warned, raising his hands before triggering his mutation ability. Aiden looked around and saw a rat-shaped skyhatcher crawling out from behind a rock. However, before Jared could attack, the rat was knocked down by a strong blast of air. Not a single hair was left on its body as it dropped to the ground. Jared turned his head in shock, only to discover that the one who had attacked the skyhatcher was Billy. He had only used one finger to kill it. Although Jared and Brielle had long suspected that Billy was definitely not an ordinary man, they hadn't expected him to be so powerful. Just a single move from Billy made Jared feel like there was a huge gap between them. He put his hand down, embarrassed, and sighed softly at Brielle. Why do I feel like the two of us are just newbies training with a group of gods? She rolled her eyes at him, but also smiled bitterly. The totem masters and the others became solemn. They put away the pride in their hearts and looked at Billy with respect. Billy stopped and closed his eyes as if nothing had happened. However, Aiden knew that the finger, which seemed like an insignificant and small move, had a profound meaning. Unlike the arrogant Jesse, Billy's actions and behavior were always well thought out. The purpose of the attack was to intimidate the group of totem masters so they would work more efficiently. They wouldn't dare waste Aiden's time or disrespect his leadership now. As expected, after witnessing Billy's strength, the totem masters began to carefully observe their surroundings. They informed Aiden as they collected more information about the area, which helped him understand the characteristics of the Skyhatchers and how they were distributed throughout the canyon. There were some environments where the Skyhatchers were more densely distributed than others. The troop figured that most of the creatures would be found wherever the Queen was. Since they knew that they would have to fight a lot before they could get to the Queen, they rested for a moment before continuing further south of the Great Rift Valley. The further south they went, the more Skyhatchers appeared. Although most of them were cubs, there were still a lot of mature Skyhatchers that were capable of devouring living things. Some of them had even attacked some of the people in Adolfo. The Totem Masters were filled with hatred and anger as they faced the evil beast that had killed their countrymen. They didn't show any mercy when killing the monsters. As they destroyed the Skyhatchers, they fell to the ground in the form of Grey Crystals. However, as he had agreed with Mama Bola, these crystals ultimately belonged to Aiden even though he and the others didn't really care about them. They were all looking forward to the appearance of more powerful and dangerous Skyhatchers, which would yield greater rewards. They had been walking through the canyon for three days. As they had wished, they encountered many huge Skyhatchers that tried to stop them from getting further south. Eventually, they came to a vast swamp. The creatures that were swimming in the murky water looked at the team with cold and evil eyes. They looked like toads, but they were as big as people. Their gray skin was covered in lumps that moved, emitting a nauseating stench. Activating Grandmaster Level Discerning Ability and Grandmaster Level Observation Ability. Analysis complete. Target Type, Commander Skyhatchers. Target Characteristics, 
rapid growth, poison attacks and invisibility, target weakness, insufficient information, temporarily unable to establish. His discerning ability had identified that the Sky Hatchers were divided into four levels. At the lowest level were the Cubs. Then there were Adult Sky Hatchers, Commander Sky Hatchers, and finally the Sky Hatcher Queen, which the team had yet to meet. Cubs could be dealt with by an ordinary martial arts fighter, while adults would have to be defeated by an expert. If a cultivator of martial arts wasn't present, a Commander Sky Hatcher would be very difficult to stop. Aiden was more concerned about the characteristics of the Commander Sky Hatchers, though. He focused on their poison and invisibility abilities, which he had never seen before. As he thought about how to confront the two characteristics, the toad started to attack everyone. The first one opened its mouth wide and a stream of brown sludge spurted out. It scattered in various directions, flying toward everyone like bullets. Spread out! Don't let it touch you! Aiden ordered sternly, his eyes narrowing. However, some reacted slower than others. A few drops of sludge landed on one of the totem master's shoulders. While it looked like ordinary mud, it was actually combined with sulfuric acid and it started to burn through the man's skin. The totem master's face contorted as he gritted his teeth and retreated. The others also jumped back in fear when they saw this. They hurriedly dodged out of the way, afraid that they would be touched by the mud. They hadn't even touched the toads yet and they were already in a sorry state. Aiden came to the side of the man whose shoulder had been burned. He raised his hand and pressed it on the injury. The man winced from the pain. He took a deep breath and shouted angrily, What are you doing? Don't move unless you want to lose an arm. Aiden released his energy in an instant, which stunned the Totem Master. The aura entered the meridians on Totem Master's shoulder. The poison that had corroded his skin was blended with the mud. If it wasn't removed in time, the poison would continue to gnaw through the man's body. Triggering Grandmaster Level Medical Ability. Triggering Grandmaster Level Rejuvenation Effect. Green smoke immediately rose from the injured shoulder. It was the corrosive poison that Aiden was forcing out. As it was removed, the pain on the Totem Master's shoulder faded more and more. He was surprised by Aiden's medical skills and also felt guilty, knowing that he had wronged Aiden. He quickly apologized. I'm sorry. Let's not talk about this now, Aiden replied calmly. Go to the side and recuperate first. Aiden helped the man to a safe place, turned around and looked at the swamp with a frown. While he was treating the Totem Master, everyone else started to fight the toads. The mud coming from their mouths seemed to shoot out in endless streams like a machine gun spitting out bullets. When the toad glared out at the warriors in front of him, he couldn't hide the pride in his eyes at the strength of his own attack. This attitude infuriated the few elders in the group, though. Jesse expressionlessly waved his hand. His target wasn't the toad jumping toward him, but the swamp around it. Suddenly, it was as if a bomb had been thrown into the water. There was a loud boom and water shot up into the air like a geyser exploding across the swamp. Using his water energy manipulation technique, Jesse moved the water higher and higher, so much so that it looked as if it would flow right out of the canyon. All the poisonous mud that was shooting out of the toad's mouth was blocked by the wall of water. As the wall grew in height, it also spread out to cover most of the area where the toad was. Its entire body was covered in water and the poisonous mud that it had been spitting out. The toad angrily shook the mud off as the attack subsided. Although the mud was corrosive, it didn't cause any harm to the toad. Even Jesse's water power had no effect on its skin. Such terrifying power worried the martial arts master from the East Coast. The others, though, were completely focused on Jesse. They were impressed by his attack. The geyser-like strike that shot into the sky seemed to have taken their breath away, so much so that they were stunned on the spot. Jared and Brielle had witnessed Adam's strength before and thought he was a rare breed. They hadn't expected that Jesse would be just as strong. They were shocked even more when they turned to watch Buster, who they had never seen fight before. They felt that the crazy old man was also not someone to be trifled with. The Totem Masters were even more dumbfounded. They had lived in Africa their whole lives and had never seen a martial arts master before. Jesse's attack seemed to have opened the door to a new world in their minds. If they were still wondering why the high priest had wanted to work with the Americans, these doubts had all disappeared. Piero subconsciously touched the wolf god totem in his hand and suddenly felt a little ashamed. He muttered to himself, Is this what ancient martial arts can do? In that instant, his eyes were filled with deep longing. The toad in the middle of the swamp was hit by another strike. It was getting more and more unhappy. After a few sharp croaks, the speed at which the lumps on its body moved suddenly sped up. Rhythmic drum beats sounded from every part of its body. 
Suddenly, one of the lumps popped like a bubble and a green toad the size of a hand immediately jumped out. More little toads burst out one by one and in the blink of an eye, hundreds of small toads filled the swamp. Their loud croaks bounced across the swamp, hurting everyone's ears. The toads then jumped into the air, simultaneously launching themselves at the team. Their attack methods were similar to the big sky matchers and they all spat mud at Aiden and the others. A large volume of mud spread over the sky, blocking out the sun and making everything dark. As the mud descended, the totem masters' faces paled. Only when they were close to death did the totem masters and the others realize how weak they actually were. It was Jesse who attacked again. He waved his hand, but the wave he created this time was much bigger than before. It formed a transparent protective barrier above everyone's heads. The mud fell like rain, but not a single drop was able to touch them. The totem masters and the others were panting. They looked up at the mud with lingering fear, though they were grateful to find that their lives had been saved. You idiots! Don't just stand there and watch the show! Jesse, who was maintaining the water barrier, was so angry that his beard shook. You can't hold on any longer? Billy teased. He waved the wooden sword in his hand, activating his wind energy manipulation power, and quickly formed a tornado that spiraled up from the bottom of the swamp. The tornado seemed to be composed of countless sharp blades. As it moved, not only did it pull the little toads into it, but it also cut them into pieces. The sound of their angry and scared croaks echoed out. The little toads that were far away jumped backward, fleeing from the terrifying tornado. The larger ones roared, but nothing they did stopped the little skyhatchers from being defeated. Adam and Buster didn't stand idle while Jesse and Billy attacked the creatures. Adam had already taken out his ink brush and trapped a large toad in place so that it couldn't move. Buster quickly snuck up behind it. Go to hell! He shouted suddenly and then swung violently at the toad's back. Is that supposed to be the universal pride strike? Jesse mocked Buster's technique when he saw it. You old thing, no one uses those moves anymore. You're really hopeless. Jesse thought that Buster had taught himself the martial arts technique and therefore couldn't do it correctly. What he didn't know was that the universal pride strike and the form and will boxing had all been taught to Buster by Aiden, as well as other fighting styles from Aiden's martial arts repertoire. Buster might have been inferior to the other martial arts masters present, but in terms of the variety of combat techniques, perhaps only Aiden could compare to him. So even though this punch seemed like the universal pride strike, it was fused with a few other skills that Buster knew. Shadows shaped like dragons floated around his fist and the earth shook as his hand drew closer to the toad. If he made contact with it, the strike would be enough to flatten it. However, Aiden, who was watching from afar, frowned. The little toads were jumping back toward the fight but this time in a peculiar formation. He had seen them utilize their poison ability, but he had yet to discover their invisibility characteristic. Soon enough, his worries were confirmed. Just as Buster's punch was about to hit the large toad, all of them suddenly disappeared from sight. Buster's hand swung out at nothing, and he stopped abruptly. He scratched his messy hair in confusion. What's going on? Everyone on the battlefield looked around with the same bewildered expressions. My target's still there. Adam said to Aiden, coming to stand by his side. Aiden knew what he meant and nodded, scanning his surroundings. The binding ability of the rigor technique meant that he still had a hold on the large toad. That meant that if the target began to move, the power would follow it like a shadow. Since Adam could feel the binding power, it proved that the toad was still nearby. However, no one knew what method the creatures had used to hide their bodies. Activating Grandmaster Level Sight. Activating Grandmaster Level Subtlety Effect. The scenery was instantly magnified. None of the details of the area escaped Aiden's eyes. He focused on a cluster of moss floating on the water and felt something strange. The sunlight shining on it seemed to be distorted. The corners of his mouth turned up and he shook his head with a smile as he realized it was the invisibility characteristic. Seeing through the invisibility characteristic, anti-concealment ability plus one, current progress one out of 10, current level beginner. Without hesitation, he called to Buster. Shoot 30 degrees north, 50 feet east. All right, Buster grinned and punched in the direction Aiden had pointed out. With a miserable cry, the toad was forced to reveal itself. But just as quickly as it was exposed, it disappeared once more. However, Aiden immediately found it again. 40 degrees to the south, 30 feet west. 20 degrees north, 50 feet west. 15 degrees east, 20 feet to the north. He accurately predicted the toad's hiding place every time. As Buster punched it, the toad's croaking became weaker and weaker. Since its invisibility method was now useless, it was continuously hit. Soon, the toad let out a wail and its huge body fell to the ground, splashing mud and water all over the place. 
Buster shook his hand and said with a gloomy face, Is that it? I barely got to fight. The totem masters and other martial artists felt their faces twitching and they stepped away from the dangerous old man. A gray crystal rolled out of the big toad's mouth as it disintegrated into gray powder. This was another characteristic of the sky hatchers. After they died, they didn't remain corpses like ordinary animals. Instead, they turned into dust. Aiden picked up the crystal and carefully observed it. It was almost the size of a volleyball and bigger than the one from the Great Crocodile, triggering Grandmaster level appraisal ability, current target function, invisibility, current target ranking, high. Aiden's eyes flashed with joy. The Toad's invisibility characteristic hadn't been very effective due to his abnormal sight ability. If he had been an ordinary man, it would have been very difficult to defeat the strange monster. The older members of the team gathered around Aiden and smiled. He felt somewhat helpless. Since these old fogies knew that he could find out the function of the crystals, they were eager to hear what he had to say. He didn't want to hide anything from them and told them about the invisibility characteristic. All of them looked at the crystal excitedly, but when they heard about its function, they weren't impressed. If it had been a different characteristic, they would have been interested. But invisibility was a basic ability for martial artists. Billy sighed dejectedly and said, Then let's draw lots and divide everything. This suggestion was unanimously approved by everyone. As they drew lots to distribute the crystals, the totem masters and the others sat on the ground, exhausted. Due to their fear, they hadn't put much effort into the fight, but their mental fatigue was far greater than their physical exhaustion. Piero suddenly started to sniff the air as if he smelled something unusual. He frowned and looked into the distance. Piero stood up and shouted, Everyone on your guard! The totem masters who were resting on the ground quickly got to their feet and stared into the distance, while Aiden and the others who were distributing the loot stopped what they were doing. Because of their powerful beast-taming abilities, the totem masters had many beast companions. Due to their strong connection with each other, they could effectively see the world through the beast's eyes. And Piero's wolves had detected something. Are there more sky hatchers here? He wondered. Soon after, a group of about 30 white-robed figures slowly walked out of a forest in the distance. Each of them had a determined look in their eyes, and their powerful aura surged around them. Aiden knew that those who dared to travel to the Great Rift Valley, which was the Sky Hatcher's territory, had to be strong enough to survive there. As he looked at the symbol on their robes, he frowned. They're from the Order of the Star, he thought. Hero's wolf pack surrounded the newcomers, baring their teeth fiercely at them. But the approaching group of spirit readers simply ignored the wolves, and they continued to walk leisurely toward the swamp. A middle-aged woman with curly, wheat-blonde hair led the group. She was tall and slender, and she moved with a charming grace. Her piercing blue eyes were as menacing as they were beautiful, and she set them firmly on the Sky Hatcher crystal in Aiden's hand. Hand that crystal over to us at once, or we'll be forced to take it from you, she shouted at him. Aiden stifled a laugh, and his mouth curled into a smirk. Are all Order of the Star members trained to be thieves? He asked. At least that punk Kieran pretended to be reasonable before he picked a fight. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the desert, Kieran was busy fighting a huge sky hatcher. As he fought, he felt his nose itch and he let out a sneeze that was so forceful it distracted him from an incoming attack. He dodged at the last moment, and then he retaliated with a powerful counterattack from his lance. The creature's corpse hit the ground with a thud. He picked up the fallen crystal and rubbed his nose. What's going on? He muttered to himself. Is someone talking about me? Back in the swamp, the spirit reader's expressions grew concerned. Their leader was startled at first, but then she composed herself. I don't know where you heard Kieran's name, she said, but you won't scare us by name dropping him. Hurry up and give us the crystal or else. As she spoke, she raised her hand and the white robes of the spirit readers behind her fluttered. Divine energy swirled around them as they waited for an order to strike. Before Aiden could say anything, Piero stood between them. Wait! He shouted to the group's leader. I'm a senior totem master of the Adolfa tribe. Take this up with me, not him. Shut up, the woman replied, scoffing. Your pathetic little tribe doesn't have the right to speak to us. The totem masters were all taken aback by her insult, and they glared at the spirit readers. In the distance, the forest rustled as the totem masters summoned their beast companions. Even though Piero was furious, he restrained himself. Africa is in chaos, and all of us have to work together to defeat the Sky Hatchers, he said solemnly. If we waste energy fighting each other, it's going to get us all killed. What does your disaster have to do with us? The woman asked, crossing her arms in front of her chest. 
We only want to take back what belongs to Doyle and the others and get our revenge against those criminals. She pointed at Aiden, and he gaped back at her. Who the heck is Doyle? He asked blankly. The spirit readers boiled with anger, and their leader's face twisted into a grimace. I'm Brianna, she said. Doyle was my younger brother. He stole his crystals from the Crocodile God's historical site and killed them and the others in the Wolf Desert. We're here to avenge them. Aiden's eyes lit up, and he finally realized who Brianna was talking about. Oh, those guys, he said with a sarcastic smile. Now that you mention it, you two do look alike. You both have the same oblivious face. Brianna was seething, and the spirit reader's auras began to simmer. Piero snorted. There are detailed records of the incident in the Golden Tower, he said. Your brother and his friends started everything, and I was the one who sent them panicking into the desert to die. Quit it with this nonsense. You think I'm the one spouting nonsense? Brianna replied, clutching her hand to her chest. Since you want to help that man and his group cover up their crimes so badly, we'll just have to kill all of you. As she spoke, some spirit readers separated from the group and surrounded Piero and the other totem masters. Just when the battle was about to start, Jared took out his FCI badge and lifted it up high, staring at Brianna. I know that you're eager to take revenge, he said, but you've got things all wrong. You're being used. You're a senior FCI agent? Brianna replied in a stupor. Even the FCI has been corrupted? Her face warped into a scowl. Doyle had nothing but the best education and upbringing, she said. There's no way he'd act like some petty thief. Seeing that Jared and Brielle wanted to speak, she waved her hand dismissively. Don't say anything or I'll go bury you with Doyle and the others, she said. Then she turned to the spirit readers and shouted, Attack! The group began to chant their prayers, and after a short while, they created a dazzling barrage of fireballs, water arrows, and ice blades that shot toward Aiden's group. Aiden and the others refused to just sit around and wait for their deaths, so they launched a counterattack. The attacks collided violently in the air, causing an aftershock to ripple through the swamp and crater the land. Aiden held back from attacking, and he told the others to go easy on the spirit readers and limit the strength of their attacks, too. He had noticed that something was off about Brianna, and he wondered where she had gotten the information about who had caused Doyle and the others' deaths. It was clear to Aiden that Brianna and the spirit readers were being used by someone who wanted to target him. Aiden knew that no matter what the mastermind's reason was for using Brianna and the others against him, he and his group shouldn't fight them too fiercely, or they would fall right into the enemy's scheme. But judging by how furious the group was, Aiden realized he needed to find a way to subdue them and fast. He glanced around and his heart fluttered as he began to mobilize energy within him that he had rarely used, the commanding aura. Soon after, throngs of skyhatchers swarmed onto the battlefield, surrounding both groups of humans on all sides. Realizing that they were surrounded, the humans temporarily stopped attacking each other. Aside from the martial arts masters who were familiar with Aiden's abilities, everyone looked terrified. Brielle looked particularly nervous. Why are there so many skyhatchers here all of a sudden? She asked. Is it because there are high-level skyhatchers around? Brianna's brow furrowed. She turned to her group and said, Let's deal with the skyhatchers first. They're a bigger threat to us right now. The spirit readers quickly changed the direction of their attack and aimed at the skyhatchers. In Aiden's group, Piero and the others were already prepared to fight the skyhatchers. But to their surprise, the creatures didn't attack them. Instead, they targeted Brianna and the spirit readers. It seemed as if they were somehow allied with Aiden's group. The strange scene left everyone dumbfounded, but when they saw the confident smile on Aiden's face, they realized what was happening. Did you do this? Piero asked him, his eyes wide with disbelief. Aiden smiled faintly in response, and everyone knew what his smile meant. Their hearts trembled as they realized that he had the power to control even Skyhatchers. Billy and the others had all used their special abilities while it seemed like Aiden had simply stood in place and whispered a few orders. Initially, the Totem Masters had looked down on Aiden, but when they saw that he could control the Skyhatchers, they treated him with the utmost respect. Rihanna and her group had also noticed what he was doing. She gritted her teeth and said, That punk has some nerve. A violent aura surged from her body, making her white robe flutter around her. God of water that feeds all things, please grant me the power to summon water and control the torrential blast, she said. The aura flowed from her body into the swamp beneath her feet, which started to bubble like a huge pot of boiling water. With a resounding boom, several water pillars shot up from the swamp into the sky, sending hundreds of skyhatchers flying and killing them instantly. Brianna panted slightly and turned her back to look at Aiden proudly. It's your turn, she said. 
What a shame, Aiden thought. I didn't summon enough Skyhatchers to wear her out. But he knew his goal had almost been achieved. Do you really think you can fight us when your friends are in that condition? He asked her. He gestured toward the rest of her group and raised his eyebrows. Rihanna turned and saw that all the other spirit readers she had brought with her were exhausted and struggling to catch their breath. She knew that she was the only one left to fight for their sake, while Aiden's group was in peak fighting form, prepped and bursting with energy. She cursed under her breath. Guess I have to do everything myself, she thought. She gritted her teeth and raised her hand to point at Aiden and the others. As she used her water sense, the swamp burbled again, turning into a torrent of water and mud that rolled toward Aiden and the others. Does she think that little trickle is going to do anything while I'm here? Jesse said, placing his hands on his hips. Who does she think she is? With a flick of his wrist, he summoned a series of rolling waves that pushed the thick mud flow away. Struck by the powerful counterattack, Rihanna spat out a mouthful of blood and looked at Jesse with fear in her eyes. Aiden wasn't surprised that Jesse's attack had overpowered her. Even though she was clearly a high level spirit reader, Jesse was the extraordinary martial arts master in charge of Universal Pride, and he had mastered water energy manipulation. Using water against him was a fool's errand. When the other spirit readers saw that Jesse had so easily pushed back the flood, they trembled in terror. They were too exhausted to run, so they watched helplessly as the waves surged toward them. Just as the water was about to wash over them, a wall made of sand appeared in front of them. The waves crashed into the wall and were diverted away from the spirit readers. Jesse stopped his attack and squinted at a figure in the distance. When he saw who it was, he frowned and shouted, What was that for, Wyatt? Wyatt Boone sauntered toward Aiden's group, grinning as he stroked his messy beard. He snapped his fingers and the sand wall crumbled away. It was the first time Aiden had seen Wyatt use energy manipulation, and he hadn't expected that Wyatt would be able to control sand energy of all things. Sand energy manipulation was a rare ability, and it was typically found in the East Coast martial arts world. It makes sense that Wyatt can manipulate sand energy, Aiden thought. He's been in a sandy area on the western border for a long time, but I won't let him be the only sand energy manipulator around here. Activating Proficient Level Duplication and Strengthening Ability Activating Grandmaster Level Realm of Ancient Truth Comprehension Ability Activating the Grandmaster Level Energy Comprehension Ability Replication and Strengthening of the Path of Sand Wyatt didn't know that Aiden was interested in his abilities. He shrugged and shook his head. I can't just sit back and watch you guys bully these spirit readers, he said. The spirit readers were touched, but Brianna shot him a suspicious glare. Who are you? she asked. Wyatt smiled warmly at her. I'm Wyatt Boone, another American, I'm afraid. Brianna frowned. Why are you helping us? Wyatt pointed at Aiden and the others with his thumb and cocked his head in their direction. I can't just let criminals like those guys walk free. Those greedy jerks stole your brother's treasure and killed him. I can't associate myself with them anymore. Wyatt shook his head sadly and looked at Brianna. Only then did Brianna let down her guard. Thank you for your help, she said. I didn't expect to find someone so kind-hearted here. Aiden had a faint smile on his face, but a cold gleam flashed in his eyes. Wyatt's words had sounded so righteous, but Aiden had noticed that Wyatt had been fixated on the crystal in his hands the whole time. Billy looked at Wyatt and sighed. You sure have changed, he said. He was the one who had originally invited Wyatt to come with Aiden's expedition to South Africa, and the two men had been good friends for many years. He saw right through his old friend's motives, and he felt conflicted when he saw how different Wyatt had become from the man he had known before. That's right, Wyatt replied. I have changed. He let out a loud chuckle. I'm much stronger now. Over the past few days, I've been killing Skyhatchers and increasing my strength. The best way for martial arts masters like us to grow stronger is through battle, and I won't let anyone stop me. He shamelessly gawked at the crystal in Aiden's hand. Billy shook his head as he took out a wooden sword. If that's the case, I'll have to be the one to stop you, he said. Suddenly, he disappeared from where he had been standing, and in the blink of an eye, he arrived in front of Wyatt. He thrust his sword forward, and a strong wind blew. The white clouds in the sky scattered in all directions, and storm clouds rolled in, spiraling down and condensing on the surface of Billy's wooden sword. As he channeled the power of his Tempest Strike ability, his shouts boomed across the valley. The wind seemed to carry his battle cry into the very core of everyone watching in awe. Aiden had never seen Billy so riled up before. He was typically calm and unflappable, even in battle. So this is the true power of the Blade Ridge Warriors, Aiden thought. 
The wind can be as calm as still water or as destructive as a thunderstorm. The fluidity of wind is its strength. A miniature tornado swirled around Billy's sword, and he raised it overhead before slashing it down toward Wyatt with a ferocious roar. A ripping sound tore through the air as if the Tempest Strike attack was pulling apart the sky itself. But Wyatt was unimpressed. He laughed wildly and punched at the sword, forming a ball of sand around his fist to cushion the blow. Sand flew in all directions as the attacks collided, creating a sandstorm, and both men stumbled a few steps back. Neither of them had managed to gain the upper hand. Meanwhile, the onlookers were dumbfounded by Billy and Wyatt's display of sheer power, especially Brianna and the Spirit Readers. Brianna knew that if an expert like Wyatt was really on their side, then they stood a fighting chance against Aiden and his group after all. In the sandstorm, Wyatt rubbed his fists and looked at Billy, who was frowning. I might have been weaker than you in the past, he said, but don't forget where we're fighting. He pointed at a spot in the distance. Outside of this valley is the vast wolf desert. You don't stand a chance against me here. No wonder he's so confident, Billy thought. He's like a fish in water with all that sand nearby. He raised his wooden sword and swung it again, and Wyatt lunged toward him. While Wyatt bought them some time, the spirit readers recovered their energy. Brianna pointed at Aiden and ordered her subordinates to attack again. But while Billy was preoccupied with Wyatt, Brianna was shocked to find that her few remaining opponents weren't as easy to deal with as she had thought. She realized too late that even if she used all her strength to hold Jesse back, her subordinates were far from being a match for Adam and Buster. In just one small scrap, all of the spirit readers were beaten to the ground. Brianna's nerves were frayed, and she didn't know what to do, so she retreated from Jesse and the other's attack. It seemed like the battle was about to be decided, but at that moment, a gravelly voice rang from outside the battlefield. Who forgot to invite me to the party? It said. Wyatt and Billy were too wrapped up in their fight to notice the newcomer, but everyone else stopped and stared at the middle-aged man in steel armor who had arrived. Kieran! Brianna cried. She pointed at Aiden and the others. These criminals killed my brother and our friends, she said through gritted teeth. You have to help us stop them. She beamed with pride and confidence as she turned back to Aiden and his group. This is Master Kieran, the top master of the Order of the Star and the inheritor of the Light Sense, she said. You're all done for now. The spirit readers bubbled with excitement as they looked at Kieran, and then they turned to see Aiden's response. But Aiden's face was blank, and Brianna and her subordinates felt that something wasn't quite right. When they looked back at Kieran, he had an uneasy expression. He touched his nose awkwardly and mumbled, Sorry to disappoint you all, but I can't fight this kid. Although his voice was soft, everyone heard him clearly, and the spirit readers were all shocked. They were more aware than anyone of Kieran's strength, and they knew that if such a big shot was admitting that he was no match for Aiden, then Aiden had to be incomprehensibly powerful. The group considered running away while they still could. Rihanna forced a thin-lipped smile. You're a real joker, Kieran, she said. That was a good one. Who's joking? Kieran replied, frowning. And who asked you to go against this kid? Were they trying to get you all killed? Rihanna stared at the ground while the other spirit readers looked at each other in dismay. No one replied. Kieran sensed that there was something fishy happening. How about you let me interrogate these people? He shouted to Aiden in the distance. I promise I'll get the truth out of them. Aiden could tell that Kieran's offer to interrogate Brianna and the spirit readers was serious. It seemed like he really didn't know what his subordinates were doing and why they were doing it. Although he had fought Kieran a few times, Aiden didn't consider him an enemy. Instead, he admired how Kieran relentlessly pursued justice and strength. Because of their mutual respect, the two had always held back when fighting and hadn't tried to kill each other. Aiden also believed that handing Brianna and the spirit readers over to Kieran would save him some trouble and allow him to deal with more pressing matters. He glanced at Wyatt, noting the bitter grimace on the man's face as he was locked in battle with Billy. Wyatt thought that with his back against the desert, even if he couldn't defeat Billy, at least he wouldn't be at a disadvantage but he hadn't expected his old friend to be so monstrously strong. Deadly winds circled around Billy's sword, blowing in all directions. The brutal force of the winds whipped Wyatt's body, making each of his attempts to attack more and more of a struggle. Wyatt also had finally noticed that Kieran had arrived and had taken Brianna and the spirit readers aside to interrogate them, leaving him alone and helpless. He felt the tide of battle turning against him. But what unnerved him the most was an eerie chill running down his spine. He scanned the battlefield to find the source of the feeling and he locked eyes with Aiden. When he saw a mysterious black light radiate from Aiden's body, his uneasiness quickly turned into pure fear as he realized the danger he was in. 
With a pitiful cry, he waved his hand at Billy and dashed toward the north side of the valley. I'll be, he started to say, but before he could finish his sentence, a massive beam of black light zipped toward him, piercing through everything in its path. As the beam traveled, it vaporized all of the rocks, trees, and water around it, and it seemed like it was sucking all of the oxygen out of the air. The light beam was extremely fast. Before everyone's eyes could track its movement, it had already pierced through Wyatt's body. With an agonizing groan, he disappeared in the blinding light. Then, the beam crashed into the wall of the valley, creating an enormous hole through it. When the beam finally faded, the battlefield fell completely silent. Everyone gaped at the place where Wyatt had stood, searching for any remnant of his body. They found nothing but smoldering dirt. Only when Aiden put away the night dragon spear did everyone come back to their senses and they turned to stare at him. Jared and Brielle looked at each other. He's definitely not normal, Jared said with a bitter smile. After seeing Aiden attack, Piero opened his mouth wide but couldn't say a word. His eyes were full of shock and respect. So he's actually the strongest member of their group, he thought. I understand why Mama Bola has to cooperate with him. Brianna and the others who had yet to enter the forest saw the destruction Aiden had wrought, and they grew pale as they thought about what would happen if Aiden decided to target them. They sighed with relief that they hadn't provoked him further. The corner of Kieran's mouth twitched slightly and he cursed Aiden under his breath. Then, he turned to Brianna and said, Do you think that it's worth getting that crystal back if it means dealing with someone as powerful as him? Brianna thought for a moment. Finally, she lowered her head and gave a long sigh, her face betraying her conflicted emotions. Even the martial arts masters were secretly awed by Aiden's attack. It had been a long time since they had seen him use such a powerful ability, and they hadn't known that he had mastered the illumination sense. Buster was very interested in Aiden's power. He approached Aiden excitedly. Hey kid, what in the heck was that move? He asked. Tell me how you did it. Jesse was a little annoyed that Buster had asked Aiden his secret before he had, but he couldn't bring himself to ask anything more. Instead, he quietly said, don't forget who helped you study the Universal Pride Lore manuscript. Meanwhile, Adam held his brush and shook his head, sighing. Aiden wiped his hands off on each other as if he had done something trivial. It's finally quiet now, he said. Let's get back to work. Everyone finally remembered what they had been doing before the battle, drawing lots to decide who would be the owner of the Skyhatcher crystal. Billy was in a sour mood. He shook his head and said, I won't compete with you. He walked to the side, looking dejected and silently dissipating the wind around his sword back into the air. Everyone knew that Wyatt's betrayal and death had hurt Billy and that he needed some time alone to process what had happened. I guess I won't fight for it either, Buster said, rolling his eyes. He knew that Aiden would only teach him more about the Illumination Sense if he got on his good side, so he didn't dare to try to take the crystal from him. Adam shook his head as well. It's useless to me even though I want it, he said. It's too different from my rigor technique for me to utilize it properly. After all the others had declined to take the crystal, Aiden and Jesse were the only ones left. Feeling cornered, Jesse flew into a rage. Oh, come on, he said. Are you all trying to make it look like I'm bullying a kid? Forget about it, it's all yours. With that, the crystal indisputably belonged to Aiden. Aiden didn't care about formalities, and he crushed the crystal in his fist without hesitation. A vast aura suddenly entered his body and knowledge about invisibility flooded his mind. Learning invisibility knowledge plus invisibility ability. Current progress 1 out of 10. Current level beginner level. As the knowledge settled in his mind, Aiden discovered a way to use light to make himself invisible. The principle of the technique was to distort light through one's aura, which would affect others' vision and achieve the effect of invisibility. It could only be used where there was light. Additionally, the invisibility method would inevitably cause fluctuations in one's aura, which a true expert might pick up on even if their eyes couldn't see through the cloak of light. But if I use this in front of ordinary people, Aiden thought, his mind racing with possibilities for his new power. He shook his head and set aside his thoughts for the moment, looking in the direction of the forest to see if Kieran's interrogation had ended. 